Hello everyone, it's Mr. Bergman, and right now I'm going to read to you a story that's one of my favorites. When I was a kid, I used to love this, and you've probably read it to yourself or have it read to have had it read to you before. This book is Stella Luna by Janelle Cannon. In a warm and sultry forest, far, far away, there once lived a mother fruit bat and her new baby. Oh, how the mother bat loved her soft, tiny baby. I'll name you Stella Luna, she crooned. Each night, mother bat would carry Stella Luna, clutched to her breast as she flew out in search of food. One night, as Mother Bat followed the heavy scent of ripe fruit, an owl spied her. On silent wings, the powerful birds swooped down upon the bats. Dodging and shrieking, Mother Bat tried to escape, but the owl struck again and again, knocking Stella Luna into the air. Her baby wings were as limp and useless as wet paper. Down, down she went, faster and faster into the forest below. The dark, leafy tangle of branches caught Stella Luna as she fell. One twig was small enough for Stella Luna's tiny feet. Wrapping her wings about her, she clutched the thin branch, trembling, cold, with cold and fear. Mother? Stella Luna squeaked. Where are you? By daybreak, the baby bat could hold on no longer. Down, down again, she dropped. Flump! Stella Luna landed headfirst in a soft, downy nest, startling the three baby birds who lived there. Stella Luna quickly clambered from the nest and hung out of sight below it. She listened to the babble of the three birds. What was that? cried Flap. I don't know, but it's hanging by its feet, chirped Flitter. Shh, here comes Mama, hissed Pip. Many, many times that day, Mama Bird flew away, always returning with food for her babies. Stella Luna was terribly hungry, but not for the crawly things that Mama Bird brought. Finally, though, the little bat could bear it no longer. She climbed into the nest, closed her eyes, and opened her mouth. Plop! In dropped a big green grasshopper. Stella Luna learned to be like the birds. She stayed awake all day and slept at night. She ate bugs, even though they tasted awful. Her bat ways were quickly disappearing. Except for one thing, Stella Luna still liked to sleep, hanging by her feet. Once, when Mama was away, the curious baby birds decided to try it too. When Mama Bird came home, <clears throat> she saw eight tiny feet gripping the edge of the nest. Eek! she cried. Get back up here this instant! You're going to fall and break your necks. The birds clambered back into the nest, but Mama Bird stopped Stella Luna. You are teaching my children to do bad things. I will not let you back into this nest unless you promise to obey all the rules of this house. Stella Luna promised. 
She ate bugs without making faces. She slept in the nest at night. And she didn't hang on by her feet. Stella B Luna behaved as a good bird should. All the babies grew quickly. Soon the nest became crowded. Mama Bird told them it was time to learn to fly. One by one, Pip, Flitter, and Flap, and Stella Luna jumped from the nest. Their wings worked. I'm just like them, thought Stella Luna. I can fly, too. Pip, Flitter, and Flap landed gracefully on a branch. Stella Luna tried to do the same. How embarrassing. I will fly all day, Stella Luna told herself. Then... No one will see how clumsy I am. The next day, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna went flying far from home. They flew for hours, exercising their new wings. The sun is setting, warned Flitter. We had better go home, or we will get lost in the dark said Flap. But Stella Luna had flown far ahead and was nowhere to be seen. The three anxious birds went home without her. All alone, Stella Luna flew and flew until her wings ached and she dropped into a tree. I promised not to hang by my feet. Stella Luna sighed, so she hung by her thumbs and soon fell asleep. She didn't hear the soft sound of wings coming near. Hey, a loud voice said. Why are you hanging upside down? Stella Luna's eyes opened wide. She saw a most peculiar face. I'm not upside down. You are, Stella Luna said. Ah, but you're a bat. Bats hang by their feet. You are hanging by your thumbs, so that makes you upside down. The creature said, I'm a bat. I'm hanging by my feet. That makes me right side up. Stella Luna was confused. Mama Bird told me I was upside down. She said I was wrong. Wrong for a bird, maybe, but not for a bat. More bats gathered around to see the strange young bat who behaved like a bird. Stella Luna told them her story. You ate b -b 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 bugs stuttered one. You slept at night? gasped another. How very strange, they all murmured. Wait, wait, let, let me look at this child, a bat pushed through the crowd. An owl attacked you, she asked. Sniffing Stella Luna's fur, she whispered, You are Stella Luna. You are my baby. You escaped the owl, cried Stella Luna. You survived? Yes, said Mother Bat, as she wrapped her wings around Stella Luna. Come with me, and I'll show you where to find the most delicious fruit. You'll never have to eat another bug as long as you live. But it's nighttime, Stella Luna squeaked. We can't fly in the dark, 
or flat, we'll crash into trees. We're bats, said Mother Bat. We can see in darkness. Come with us. Stella Luna was afraid, but she let go of the tree and dropped into the deep blue sky. Stella Luna could see. She felt as though rays of light shone from her eyes. She was able to see everything in her path. Soon, the bats found a mango tree, and Stella Luna ate as much of the fruit as she could hold. I'll never eat another bug as long as I live, cheered Stella Luna as she stuffed herself full. I must tell Pip, Flitter, and Flap. The next day, Stella Luna went to visit the birds. Come with me and meet my bat family, said Stella Luna. Okay, let's go, agreed Pip. They hang by their feet, and they fly at night, and they eat the best food in the world, Stella Luna explained to the birds on the way. As the birds flew among the bats, Flap said, I feel upside down here. So the birds hung by their feet. Wait until dark, Stella Luna said excitedly. We will fly at night. When night came, Stella Luna flew away. Pip, Flitter, and Flap leapt from the tree to follow her. I can't see a thing, yelled Pip. Neither can I, howled Flitter. I shrieked Flap. They're going to, to crash, gasped Stella Luna. I must rescue them. Stella Luna swooped about, grabbing her friends in the air. She lifted them to a tree, and the birds grasped a branch. Stella Luna hung from the limb above them. We are safe said Stella Luna. Then she sighed. I wish you could see in the dark, too. We wish you could land on your feet, Flitter replied. Pip and Flap nodded. They perched in silence for a long time. How can we be so different and feel so much alike, mused Flitter. And how can we feel so <laughs> different and be so much alike, wondered Pip. Feel so different and be so much alike, wondered Pip. I think this is quite a mystery, Flap chirped. I agree, said Stella Luna, but we're friends, and that's a fact. The end. Stella Luna is a story about a bat who hangs out and gets raised by birds. And they're not the same type of animal. They're not kin. And they're totally different from each other. And even though they're totally different from each other, they can acknowledge their differences and still be best of friends and still care for each other, even though they don't do things the same way or they don't eat the same food or they don't look alike. Uh, they don't have the same skills. They can still be friends. Here's a couple bat facts. Of the nearly 4,000 species of mammals on Earth, Almost one quarter are bats, the only mammals capable of powered flight. The scientific name for bats is Chiroptera, hand wing, because the skeleton that supports the wing is composed of the animal's elongated finger bones. You can see a picture of that right there. They have a thumb, right there, and then they have their fingers, which go down just like a human hand. The majority of bats are classified as microchip, microchiroptera, small hand wing. Nearly 800 varieties fill special niches in every climate around the world except for the polar zones. The lifestyles and food preferences of microchiroptera vary widely. Many eat insects, while others catch fish, amphibians, and reptiles. Finally, there is the famous vampire, of which there are only three species, 
ranging from Mexico to Argentina. The vampire's victims are mostly domestic cattle and native animals and birds, native mammals and birds. The other 170 species or so are fruit bats, otherwise known as megachiroptera, or large hand wings. As the name implies, these are the largest bats, some types boasting wing wingspans as, as big as six feet, which is how tall I am. Their wings going across wingtip to wingtip, six feet, some of them. Fruit bats generally have large muzzles, long gray, long eyes, pointy ears, and furry bodies, which is why they're often called flying foxes. Unlike the microchiroptera who travel by echolocation, Fruit bats depend on their keen vision and sense of smell to navigate. They live in tropical and subtropical climates that provide year-round supplies of their favorite fruit, flowers, and nectar. Some fruit bats, as they forage for nectar, are responsible for pollination of many types of night-blooming trees and plants. Others eat whole fruits, seeds, and all, and distribute the seeds over the forest floor in their droppings. Regeneration of tropical forests depends greatly on bats. A few things you might want to look up right now or in the future. There's a special name for bat droppings that starts with a G. What is it? Also, uh, another thing you might want to look up is what other animals use echolocation? What is echolocation? Are bats the only thing that use it? Mm, I don't think so. That's everything. Boys and girls, thank you for listening. See you next time.